So welcome to Night Hacking. Uh, we are here at DevOx, and uh, I'm Yolande Poirier from Oracle Technology Network. And my guest is David de Labassi. David, hi. Hi. So David, you are, um, so what's your title anyway? So you work at Oracle on Java EE, but uh, so you what? Yeah, that's evangelist? right. Yeah, so I'm an evangelist working in a Java organization at, Ora at Oracle. Okay, so you know everything about Java EE then, right? What's coming next? Uh, yeah, let's <laughs> say that I knew quite a few things on Java EE. <laughs> okay, so, s and you have a session actually at DevOps as well. That's right, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so, w so what's the news? What do we know so far? So basically, um, my session is about uh, Java Next. So Java Next uh, is a kind of two-phase approach uh, to deliver uh, Java EE, uh, the next version of Java EE. So that uh, that is basically two version uh, of Java EE. That is Java EE 8 that we would like to finalize. So I mean the specification and the reference implementation. We would like to finalize that by the end of next year. And then th the other step would be Java EE 9 that we would like to finalize uh, right after that. So that basically means that we are working in parallel towards those two versions of Java EE. Okay, so you f you're thinking already of the two versions um yes, we don't simultaneously. Yeah, that's right. We don't want to delay Java EE 8 anymore. Right. So that's why we have this uh, parallel approach, basically. So uh, do you um, do you have like more specific uh, APIs and things that you know that will be or that are proposed for yeah. Java E8? So at this stage, everything is still a proposal. But uh, for example, for Java E8, there are things that we would like to see and that we have already discussed. And I mean, there are already a uh, GCP uh, expert group working on those. So for example, there is uh, on the security space, there are a lot of things to do. So right now, there are some discussions regarding the exact scope of that GSR. But for example, one of the things that we would like to do uh, is open having a, a standard way open ID support within the Java e platform. So that's uh, that's something that we know is important. So you can already do that today in the Java e space, but you need to basically bring external frameworks. So we would like to avoid that and basically standardizing that in the to the platform. So there are discussions going around that. Um, OOT is another standard that uh, we would like to see uh, in the platform. And finally, around the security space, um, secret management is something which will be very important when it comes to uh, cloud-based deployment. So that's the kind of thing that we would like to have in the specification, in the security specification. S so you mentioned security. So th those are really brand new or what's... Uh, what's so security was part of the initial Java 8 proposal. Uh, okay. Another API that was part of the initial proposal that will be part of Java 8, that's uh, JSONV. Uh, so JSONB is basically uh, the equivalent of uh, JAXB. So JSONB is to JSON what JAXB is to XML. So it's basically an API that can be used to marshal and unmarshal Java uh, object to and from a JSON document. So right now this API is already in early draft. So people can already check the API and wow. see how it works and provide feedback. So that's another API that will be part of Java 8. And then for Java 8, we are proposing to add uh, two new, uh, brand new API. That is the configuration API and the else check API. So if we're looking at the configuration API, uh, the basic idea of that API is basically to provide a standard way for uh, externalizing uh, the configuration from an application. So that means that at the end of the day, you basically will have two artifacts, the application itself and its configuration. And when it comes to reconfiguring the application, you don't have to touch the application. You just need to change the configuration itself. Mm -hmm. So it's really about externalizing the configuration from an application. It's not an API that can be used by any application to configure itself. Okay. So, so that's more portable then? Yeah. The idea is that uh, given that Java Next is targeting a cloud and microservices type of okay. environment, we need to make sure that we provide the right portability level. So with that API, it would be easier to reconfigure an application, a Java e application that is deployed in to a Java e, uh, cloud environment. So that's one thing. And then the other API is the that we would like to have for uh, Java e 8 uh, is the else check API. That API is basically an API that allows uh, an application to expose metrics about itself. So how, how it behaves. Um, that is an API that would be useful uh, to basically get information about how the different applications that are running in the platform behaves. That's something that can be consumed by the by different tools, like an external management tool, but also the cloud platform itself. And that is something that is important when it comes to, for example, microservices. 
you will have multiple services, so you need to have the ability to easily monitor those different uh, services. Okay. So that's one thing that we would like to see in Java E8 as well. Okay. So, um, w so what are some of the APIs that are like further along, right? Because I mean, they're all like kind of at the different stage, but yeah. So, so JSON B, uh, I mean, we already have an early draft. Yeah. Uh, security GSR, uh, there are already a lot of discussion happening. So mm -hmm. those one are quite already advanced. Uh, regarding configuration and health check, at this stage, this is just a proposal. So uh, we would like to propose that as a as brand new GSR. Okay. So that's something that we still need uh, to discuss and do. But having said that, it's not Java E8 is not just about those API. We also have API existing API that are evolving in Java E8 itself, mm -hmm. like bin validation. So bin validation uh, will move to the to bin validation too. And they are adding uh, quite some nice features, like having the ability to do validation on a collection of elements, for example, mm -hmm. something that we don't have today. CDI2 is evolving as well in Java E8, adding uh, support for asynchronous events, for example. Uh, JaxRS is evolving in uh, Java E8, so yeah. we'll have um, so in JaxRS2, so Java E7, we had a new client API. In JaxRS21 for Java E8, we would like to evolve that API so that it is reactive because we know that going forward, uh, having a reactive-based programming model is something that is key for Java mm -hmm. Next. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of things that we are doing um, for Java E8. Okay, and so how do you see, like, okay, so we're thinking, so Java E8 uh, for next year and then Java 9. So what will be kind of the, the, the difference or the, the path from one to the next? What's the, the high level yeah. thinking behind those releases? So. Java E9 is basically really about doing the right thing to the platform to make sure that it can be easily used in a cloud-based environment and that it Java E can also be used uh, to develop microservices-based architecture. So that means that, for example, we have to do a lot of things regarding uh, the deployment. Uh, for Java E9, one of the ideas we have regarding deployment is maybe that is maybe we should look at the lighter model where basically uh, we would just deploy one artifact. So we would have one jar that includes the application and the Java container itself. Mm -hmm. Then we can go a step further, given that Java 9 will be based on AC9. It would be wise to use uh, Java 9 modularity to basically have a just enough runtime container, so just the capability that are needed by the application bundled directly uh, with the application itself. Uh, those are the kind of things that uh, we're looking at for Java 9. And then uh, we also have open questions regarding, uh, for example, should we look at standardizing NoSQL in Java 9? Those kind of things. So uh, I have to admit that for Java 9, there is quite a lot of work that we still need to do. Uh, and it's very exciting because, I mean, uh, there are different uh, space that we need to tackle and would that we would like to see uh, into the platform. And so right now, uh, so can people, so what can people do? So the, this part of this technology is also available. There is there yes. are votes going on. So can you explain a little bit how people can participate, maybe give feedback, test? So, 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 so basically right now we have, we already have uh, quite some GSR that are uh, addressing, w that are going on for Java 8, like JSON B, for example, which it's already, uh, it's not yet done, but it's already in a early draft form. So it, the work is very advanced. GSR, we have a very active uh, working group working on that. So, I mean, th those GSR are very well, well handled. But for example, for the new API, like uh, the, the one that we would like to propose, like the configuration API, mm -hmm. uh, as soon as we, well, we kickstart that, that means that we will have a new EG. And if people feel like they have a value to bring, uh, for example, in that space, that's something that uh, is very welcome, obviously. So people can join either a specific uh, expert groups, and if they don't have the time to uh, do that, because that's a lot of work, they can anyway uh, observe and provide feedback. But because as soon as we have an expert working, everything is, out is, is visible outside of the firewall. So they are clearly seeing what is being discussed technically, and they can obviously provide feedback. That's something which is important. And there is also the, um, the Adopter JSR program, are you Yes, a that's bit something that we are also looking at. Uh, so for example, we have been discussed with the BJAP to do a specific Adopter JSR for JSONB. And as we are making progress on the new uh, upcoming JSR, obviously Adopter JSR is a program that will be very useful, where basically we ask a JUG, a Java user group, mm -hmm. to pick up an Adopter JSR and 
play with it, write samples, try to break it uh, before w uh, it goes final so that if something is wrong, we still have the time to fix that. Great. And often I've heard that uh, actually the expect uh, the expect um, the spec lead actually un uh, really appreciates also yes. the feedback. Uh, yeah, they are very because keen because um, basically it's, it's, it's about giving uh, w their work in the end of real users. Right. So that's something which is important. Great. So thank you, David. Thank you for talking to us and for explaining a little bit of about Java EE and those two releases. So thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you.